This is a well-known Ukrainian sports commentator, journalist and TV producer Mykola Vasilkov. Prior to the Russian invasion, he had worked abroad, but as soon as he learned about that the war had begun, without hesitation, he decided to return home. I worked in Armenia, in Yerevan, and a friend called me at night and said, Kokosha, you said there would be nothing to worry about, but now we have explosions here. I went to Tbilisi. It was so hard to wait for the flight in Tbilisi. There I found a flight to Warsaw. The Ukrainian the Ukrainian guy who lives in Poland took me to the pedestrian crossing point, as I thought, and there was no pedestrian crossing. I tried to get into one of the trucks, but they didn't pick me up. So I got on the bus that took me through the border, then another bus to Lviv, and from there I went to Kyiv. Mikola's creative and communication skills have come in handy. To master chaos and turn it into source of something useful, you need to think creatively. Shortly after returning to Ukraine, Mikola and his partner set up the Restorator Charitable Foundation. With my partner, volunteer, the founder of this organization, Restorator, Dmitro Dubas, we were making a YouTube show, Restorator. Her. It actually gave its name to our organization. We didn't think for a long time. Our show was about football. There we restored and fed football players who have already begun to be forgotten. And now we restore and feed migrants and refugees. At the beginning of the war, the foundation fed the defenders and all those who needed it. Today, Restorator is not just about food. Every day, the foundation sends tons of completely different humanitarian aid to the region of Ukraine, where hostilities have taken place or taken place right now. This includes food, medical supplies, hygiene, products, etc. This is our food warehouses. This is how it's stored. Here is everything that we received from our, so to speak, donors or just from people. Here we have flour canning, apples, sweets, tea, coffee, a lot of things. We used to receive a lot of aid, but now it has become very difficult with provisions. We don't get as much as before. Every day I send a lot of requests to different organizations. So a person has just arrived from Germany, one is currently living in Spain, another one is expected to arrive from Italy. But we need more. You might have noticed that I'm constantly checking my phone. Every minute I receive reports about our aid deliveries. Here are all those people. Already with goods we sent to them. It's mandatory for the volunteer organizations to receive such reports, to make sure that goods you've sent are received. This is Sonia Sotnik. Most people recognize her by voice, as she hosts a morning show on one of the country's most popular radio stations. There's only rock. In life of the air, Sonia never stops doing everything possible to help people. Every Ukrainian who have seen 2004, 2014, the Maidan, the war, already knows what to do when things go bad. Ukrainians know where to run. It seems to me that half of us have this knowledge in blood. It's like our special gene. The project called Nashapku, the musical term for playing on the streets for money, originated in 2014, when the annexation of Crimea took place and the war in Donbass began. Since then, hundreds of charitable events have been held aimed at palliative care for seriously ill Ukrainians. Later, they began to collect the help for Ukrainian army. This is all about tactical medicine. This is what saves lives. Strong intelligence is life-saving with thermal imagers and drones. And, of course, tactical medicine turns tiles, bandages, everything that should be in every first aid kit. It's needed in huge amounts. Concert attendees can either make a random donation or buy something at a charity auction. For eight years, more than 200 leading Ukrainian artists have sung their songs as part of the project. Many musicians who became the headliners of these concerts today joined the armed forces of Ukraine and now fight against the occupiers and the front line. And even in such circumstances, they take a day off in the war and come to see their fans. This time it was the famous Ukrainian singer Yuri Yurchenko, Yurkesh. The music is appropriate to raise the fighting spirit of the boys. It doesn't happen that I come to a front line without a guitar. Otherwise, guys will probably send me back home. War is war, but music is crucial. <laughs> 
charity concerts always gather full halls and almost none of those present stays away, investing their share in the charity. The auction sells both truly unique and valuable rarities and humorous lots to cheer up. I help older people. My friends and I call ourselves a gypsy battalion. We help both the military and civilians. We do whatever we can. Tonight is just one of the components. I'm not a musician, I'm a writer and director. And this, yes, this is my hobby, which can help people in particular. So today it will be so. This is only a small part of the huge community of Ukrainian volunteers who in fact abandoned their usual life and began to help the country. Each of them has a single principle – humanity. Nowadays people in Ukraine joke that volunteers can definitely find you a good husband or wife, help finding a G-spot or even get a Bayraktar. In Lithuania, for example, journalist Andrew Stapinas launched a platform that raised 5 million euros to buy Bayraktar for Ukrainian army. The required amount was collected within three days. I hope that together, when we say Bayraktar, just do it, we will be able to say at the end of this evening, Bayraktar, we just did it. Lithuania, Poland, Romania, Germany, Portugal, Canada and even Australia. People that are ready to help are everywhere. They spend their time and money helping Ukrainian refugees and raising humanitarian aid for those who remain in Ukraine. They do it sincerely because they understand that it will be difficult for Ukrainians to survive the barbaric war without their help. They do so despite the hissing of Russian propagandists. Russia wanted bipolar world. Russia got it. Now the world is indeed divided between those who profess humanity and those who seek to destroy it, hiding behind political chatter. And it doesn't matter what the Kremlin is saying today, this is not about Ukraine, it is about humanity and it's about the future.